Greetings, everyone, and welcome to today's daily devotion. We're going through the book of Genesis, and today's verses are taken from Genesis 6, verses 18 through 22. Let's go ahead and read our passage together. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall come into the ark, you, your sons, your wife, your sons' wives with you, and of every living thing of the flesh. You shall bring two of every sort into the ark, to keep them alive with you, they shall be male and female, of the birds according to their kinds, and of the animals according to their kinds, of every keep creeping thing of the ground according to its kind, two of every sort shall come into you to keep them alive, and take with you every sort of food that is eaten, and store it up. It shall serve as food for you and for them. Noah did this, he did all that God commanded him. So chapter 6 began with a bridge from the genealogy of chapter 5 to the, uh, to the narrative of the flood in chapter 6. So on one hand, the genealogy narrative has ended and the flood narrative begins. And as man fulfilled his duty to be fruitful and multiply, along with that multiplication came the increase of wickedness upon the earth. And one thing we notice is with the increase of wickedness comes the shortening of lifespans. Verse 6 tells us that God was grieved in his heart that he had made man. Now, while we don't have the time to unpack all that uh, we should notice is that God feels emotions as the result of human behavior. He grieves wickedness on one hand and he rejoices in righteousness on the other. And because of his justice, he must punish sin. Uh, sin. But his perfect justice is carried out not as at the expense of his mercy, love, and grace, and his mercy, love, and grace is carried out, but not at the expense of his justice. So he establishes a covenant with Noah, provides all that Noah needs to carry out his responsibility in that covenant agreement. And here God will preserve a remnant of his creation. He preserves human life. He preserves the animals. He preserves food for them all by making this covenant with Noah. And this is the first mention of the word covenant in the Bible, which he, he, he preserves and he promises on one hand, but he also destroys some things on the other. Now, because our God is one who feels emotion towards human behavior in that he rejoices in righteousness, it would benefit us to demonstrate the character of Noah here. He was described in verse 9 as a righteous man, blameless in his generation, Noah was a man who walked with God. Now, God obviously showed favor to Noah in that by preserving him and his family line. So how did Noah demonstrate that he was righteous and a blameless man who walked with God? Well, the answer is in verse 22 of our text today. It says, he did all that God commanded him. So even though God is one who establishes and keeps covenant, he gives us a responsibility in that covenant relationship with him. Obedience then becomes the marker, if you will, of love and devotion to God. In John 14, verse 15, Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. So love for God then becomes the motivating factor in our life that compels us to want to honor Him in all that we do. Obedience is a byproduct of our love for God. So consider your lives today. Just like Noah, God is telling you to do certain things and not to do other things. How do you measure up to the example Noah sets here? Are you responding in obedience to all that God commands for your life? When you think of Noah and the fact that he did all that God had commanded him, what are the areas in your life that need to fall in line with God's covenant requirements? More specifically, in what ways are you not walking with God, but instead walking for yourself and, and to please yourself uh, rather than to please God? Remember, Walking in obedience is motivated by love, and through your life of love and obedience, God wants nothing more than to pour out His loving kindness to those who love Him and keep His commandments. So God bless you today as you look at the example of Noah, and more importantly, the example of Christ, and consider ways to subject your life to be one of love, obedience, and devotion to God. God bless you guys. We'll see you next time.